let's look at free fall now. So you've all no doubt heard of a person called Galileo and as the story goes, he went up to the leaning tower of Pisa and threw two objects down <clears throat> of different masses and they both hit the ground at the same time and Galileo was the, kind of the one who came up with the concept of inertia. Now, <clears throat> the premise behind free fall is the fact that all objects fall at the same rate in a gravitational field. So if you're really close to the Earth, it doesn't matter whether you drop an elephant, well, or, well, we'll have a, you know, a little trampoline here, so so that our elephant won't get hurt. Or if you would drop a golf ball, <clears throat> and if you were to ignore air resistance, you will find that both these objects will fall to the ground at the same rate because they both experience the same acceleration. And that acceleration is due to the gravitational force from the Earth. And we give that acceleration special symbol G. And the value of that acceleration is frequently taken to be 9.81 meters per second squared, <clears throat> which is the average value. So if you went up to the poles, it'd be slightly larger than that. If you went down to the equator, it would be slightly smaller than that due to the effects of the rotation of the Earth. So that is the premise that um, upon which free fall is based. So every time you see a free fall problem or you recognize the problem to be in free fall, you set up your SUVAT equations or your kinematical equations and you immediately set the acceleration to g. So that takes care of one variable in the system. All right, let's take a look at an example as to how we may utilize this. So let's look at a situation where I have a cliff and I'm going to drop this object. Now when you're doing problems now, you need to, because you're dealing with vectors, you need to make sure that your directions are correct. So it's up to you to define what you want to be positive and what you want to be negative. In this case, I'm going to call down positive and up negative. And so long as you stick with this convention, it doesn't matter whether you pick up positive or down positive, so long as you stick with it, then your answers will come out to be correct. Now let's say the cliff is 80 meters high and I'm dropping the object from rest. So the initial velocity is zero and the question asks with what speed or with what velocity will it enter the water here? So what is V? So let's set it up. I'm gonna have, oops, um, for a different color here. Let's set it up. I'm going to have S U V A T and S is 80 meters and it's plus 80 meters because the object is going down. Now U is 0. V is what we're trying to find and A is plus 9.81. Now it's plus 9.81 because acceleration is in the downwards direction. If you were to choose the convention where upwards is positive, then you would need to change the acceleration to minus 9.81 and the displacement to minus 80 as well because both those quantities are going downwards and hence we don't need the time. So if you refer back to our kinematical equations and look at which one does not contain V, you'll find that the equation that does not contain V is S equals UT plus half AT squared. Now the initial velocity is zero, hence this first quantity vanishes because zero times anything um, is zero and I'm solving for the final velocity. Now, if you were to go back and look at which equation does not contain time, you'll find that 
it is the last equation, which is v squared equals u squared plus 2 acceleration times displacement. And in my case, the initial velocity is 0, so that vanishes. And I can solve for the final velocity by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. It should give me the square root of 2as. And take the root of that, 0.81 times 80, which works out to be about... 40 meters per second. So that's how fast the object will enter the water.